Live from the San Jose Convention Center, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Hadoop Summit 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Hortonworks. And by EMC, Pivotal, IBM, Pentaho, Teradata, SyncSort, and by Attunity. Now your hosts, John Furrier and George Gilbert. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here in Silicon Valley at Hadoop Summit 2015. This is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from noise. I'm John Furrier. My co-host, George Gilbert, our new asset, big data asset at wikibon.com. And our next guest is Ashley Sturp, CMO of Talon. Welcome to theCUBE. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, so, it's just getting started day two. Day one was yesterday. A lot of enterprise, it's crossed the chasm, it's going mainstream. Pretty much everyone's like, okay, Hadoop's going mainstream. So what's your take on that and what are you guys doing and what's the big, big news with you guys here? Yeah, well, you know, we're seeing the our Hadoop business accelerate dramatically. We finished last year at 122% and then our Q1, we grew the business 178%. So I'm not sure if I would call it having crossed the chasm yet or not. It's already a huge business, but I think it's got a ton of potential yeah. yet ahead of it. We just talked about that on the intro. They kind of land in like a little uh, staging area, kind of like a drop, a golf ball drop. He's still in play, but you know, still, yeah. still kicking butt. But a yeah, lot of debate on crossing the chasm. Yeah. Why don't you think it's, it's there fully, or is it because well, of the I, apps? You or? know, I mean, if you look at Hadoop, it provides tremendous value in terms of performance and cost savings, uh, and yet it's still pretty hard to work with. There's a lot of growing up it's still got to do, and yeah. that's where tools like Talon come in in terms of providing a visual interface, allowing you to yeah. do drag and drop data integration instead of having to hand code MapReduce, for example. You know, we were speculating uh, yesterday and this morning, again, um, on the intro, it's like, the industry wants to self-congratulate ourselves because mm -hmm. it's not a fail. I mean, Hadoop is all steam yeah. ahead. So I think the chasm is crossed from an industry perspective. Right. But the customers are a completely different story, and we heard from Gartner, we were talking about that yesterday, is how they want to buy is, is an ease of use message, we're hearing that. Yeah. What is the state of the consumption of the customer? I mean, w will there be just Hadoop? There's going to be other platforms. What's going on in the customer's mind? What And how do they talk about this? What's the linguistics that they use? They don't say, do they say, give me some MapReduce? Right, do no, they they're definitely not saying that. <laughs> or give me some Hadoop. And, and what I hear a customer are saying is how do I take advantage of Hadoop and how do I fit it into the rest of my IT ecosystem? So how can I get data from all these different places, use Hadoop as a great place to analyze it and act on it in real time, but then I need to push all that insight back into the cloud applications I'm using at my on-prem, you know, an SAP or something like that, and how do I make it actionable for the business? And so what do you think that the, the industry needs to do to go get to the chasm? Is it ease, just ease of use? Is it integration? Is it more software? You, fill you know, in the white for spaces? sure it's across the board. I mean, for us, what we're focused on is uh, being able to act in real time. Yeah. So not only can you do the, the high volume, heavy analytics, but then how do you make it actionable? I mean, a great example. Oh, I was going to yeah. ask, how yeah. do you close that circle? Right. Well, a great example of that is a company called Otto. They're one of the largest online e-commerce companies in the world based out of Germany. And what they're doing is, you know, 50 to 70% of their shopping carts get abandoned. And they've realized that if they can predict who is going to abandon a cart and then pop an offer in real mm -hmm. time, you know, free shipping or yeah. a coupon, something like that, they can have a dramatic impact on their business. Several hundred million more in sales by influencing that one event. And uh, what I love is their CTO, his comment was, if you can't act on it in real time, all you can do is measure how much money you're losing. Yeah, I love that. And I love your tagline on your on your, your business, given instant value from all your data. And I got to ask you to take us through kind of the mindset of, of, of a scenario. So I was talking to a uh, Hadoop uh, entrepreneur, mm -hmm. and um, he's like, we are domain experts in this vertical. They have been kicking butt. They're doing great, self-funded, making money. It's a business, and you know, it's growing, and yeah. they're happy. They got you know 80 employees, going to be like 300. Mm -hmm. They're on a great trajectory. They do seven-figure deals now. They're going to do like, eight, you know, ten million kind of size deals, big deals. Um, I, mean, I, I said, "What's your challenge?" He goes, "Here's my biggest challenge: we're app developers. We're, yeah. you know, we're writing software, and so when we bring it to a customer base, we're so excited. When we get to the customer, they say, "Great, but you got to support this systems management tool from the '90s that we have, or this mm -hmm. and that." So, what happens is he has to write more software, right? Which is not in his mindset or his budget. Yep. So that's the kind of a real scenario that we see. It's gonna. It's, I've seen that in multiple cases. So take us through that use case because that becomes a challenge. Yeah. Because you have an invested party, the software developer, right. building value. 
using data sets that are specific to that domain expertise. Well, make sure you tell them about Talon next time yeah. you talk to them. No, is that, is that a use a, case for you guys? Absolutely. Yeah, we have a big OEM business where we've got companies just like that that are pulling data together. Uh, using our tools to help pull data together or let their customers do it for them, depending on whether the customer wants to pay for that or they want to take that on themselves. But how do you do the s sort of square the circle of, I mean, pulling data together mm -hmm. is sort of, you know, they're well-known alternatives. Yeah. Um, and there's, there's a variety of sort of machinery underneath to, to accomplish that. Right. But to feed that in in real time, yep. how does that part work? Yeah, so I mean, just to give you a little history of the company, we started off in data integration doing you know, traditional ETL, and then we moved to data quality, and yeah. then we added in master data management, which is actually super important. I mean, yeah. a, a great example is uh, one of our financial services customers. They want to take Twitter data and then combine it with their traditional customer data so that if they see somebody tweeting in Florida and supposedly buying a flat screen in Chicago, they know that maybe they've got a fraud incident there. Uh, and that's a perfect example of where you and need to be And that's a hard to problem to solve, yeah. too, because not everyone uses their real name on Twitter. Sure, So you have to course. kind of do all yep. kinds of cleansing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, I mean, the key thing there is you've got all these new t types of data sources, yeah. right, that are exploding. Yeah. But where you get the real value is if you combine that with yeah. your other customer information. And so getting that 360-degree view of a customer, which master data management does, that's a key piece in it. It's just a step I in I think the that's journey, a huge right? deal because here, yeah. you talk about fraud detection. You also right. have mobile and first-party data, whether yep. it's click, non-click-stream data, mm -hmm. you get first-party data. I'm actually texting from Vegas, yep. making withdrawal from Vegas, which right. happened to me a couple weeks ago at a Cube event, and then I get a fraud detection. My credit card gets turned off. Suspicious activity. I mean, the data's out there. I'm right. on my phone. Yep. <laughs> I'm making transactions. Just because I flew out of San Jose in, in an hour. I mean, right. That's, so their lag is not real time. So they right, were working right. off my data in yeah. San Jose. Didn't factor in the phone data. Right. That's kind of an interesting scenario that you're kind of teasing out, right? And, and there are hundreds of those. And so, like, being able to get that complete view of the customer, that's kind of step two, call it. Right? And then the next step is, okay, do I have uh, an ESB uh, type, type technology real-time integration to be able to push that to whatever system is interacting with the customer right there in the moment? So I was kind of like um, um, not dissing 360 view of the customer. I love the concept, uh -huh. but right. I, it's been overused, it, right? Omnichannel sure. marketing is another word. Yep. It's like we all know that's legitimately mm -hmm. a new paradigm we have to live in. Yeah. But 360 degree view of the customer is, has to be real time. Every right. step you take, your context changes. So Absolutely. How does that work in your mind? Are you guys seeing that in your solutions and what do customers do to get that? I mean, true 360. Right. Well, no question. I mean, you know, the first thing is just how do you bring together all this silo data? Yeah. You know, what did they buy in the store? What did they buy online? You know, what customer service calls have you had? And how can you just pull all that together to give insight to the person on the phone? Oh, I see that you bought these things here and those things there. You know, maybe the sweater would go well with that outfit, for example. Yeah. Uh, but then the next step is getting predictive around it. So not just acting in real time, but being able to predict the next thing the customer's going to so do. So i got to ask you, what do you think the biggest driver for this, this growth is? Because I mean, we're talking mm -hmm. about scenarios that are, li like, are hitting mainstream. Yep. You know, like real-time analytics in the moment. Mm -hmm. um, Twitter data, master data, that's a great yep. trend that's happening. Yep. New sources are coming in. Internet of Things probably fits beautifully into that. What's the big driver? Is it mobile? Is it the cloud? What do you guys see as well, fueling to me, the business? The, the number one thing is just the explosion of data kind of across all those. You know, it's mm -hmm. uh, clearly a disruptive time. And the people that can take advantage of that data to be faster, to be more intelligent, to offer new products and services, they're the ones that are going to win. How much, how much of this is, do you go in with a sort of repeatable productized solution mm -hmm. and how much has to be customized to the, you know, the individual feeds of data that you know, yeah. going to roll up? Well, for sure there are things like master data management where we've got a, a methodology and a process for pulling all that information together. But you know, we really are providers of a Swiss army knife and frankly at this stage of the industry's growth, every company we're working on is trying to do something innovative and different and so there isn't that kind of standard repeatable solution that we're putting out there in the market as just go do it like this. Okay. Thanks to a customer use case, because mm -hmm. this is fascinating. Cause this is, yeah. You're talking about really providing a hammer and nails right away for right. customers. You yeah. know, can start basic, and then as they grow, your toolbox grows. Right. Connectors are huge. I mean, connectors are you know, top of the funnel if you're in marketing right. and other, connect, other systems. So take us through a use case of a customer yeah. or 
kind well, of really category. exciting one is GE. So you know what what they're doing again an example of combining data. So they've got all their past purchase data for let's take uh, windmill turbines. So they know you know the products the customers purchased. They're typically the ones providing the su service and support on those. And now they're starting to say, okay, how can I pull all the sensor data from those windmills mm -hmm. together and be able to predict, you know, when is the most cost-effective time to send somebody out and how do I make sure that I can guarantee as little downtime as possible? Yeah, so they save money on maintenance. They have to drive a truck out and say, is the windmill working? That's right. <laughs> yeah, it looks yeah, like it's working. Yeah. And they're estimating that they can save their customers $2 billion a year in terms of lost energy. And how do they buy from you guys? I mean, how do you mm -hmm. guys uh, inter interface with customers? SaaS, is it subscription? It's is a it subscription license, model. OEM? Yeah. So subscription, take us through that. Yeah, and uh, so we, we typically charge per developer. That's one thing that really differentiates us from a lot of the other players out there that are more you know, either nodes-based or something that's tied to the data that's being processed, which is extremely hard to predict, particularly in this world. And we make it pretty simple. You typically know how many developers you've got on a project. It's a subscription model. You know, if we don't deliver, you don't need to keep paying. So your developers are their developers? Their developers, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. sometimes developers. integration, That's they, a wanna, great question. they might want to do that, okay. Yeah, right. What about, uh, like, for the for the unwashed masses who mm -hmm. still, you know, like like COBOL programmers a couple decades, decades ago, uh -huh. um, think in traditional e sort of ETL and master data tools, you know, not naming any names. Right. Okay. How's the methodology different? Because, you know, the, the words are similar. Yeah. But... Tell us how the machinery works in the world of big data that's different. Well, I mean, that's actually one of the things we think is our real strength is that you don't need a Hadoop developer to start working with our technology. Basically, any data integration developer that's been working with Oracle or MySQL or what have you can use our tools and start immediately working with Hadoop. And, but I was thinking of, I was thinking of the pre-Hadoop mm -hmm. class of right. data integration people. Right. Oh, so you're saying, that is the, the point, is that you can serve them. That's right, And exactly. bring them along. That's right, exactly. Okay, and then. There's no question that one of the big barriers is just having skills. skilled people. Yeah. So what, um, in, in the e traditional ETL world, mm -hmm. is the workflow the same with your, with your tools, or are there different steps, but you can still leverage the same skills? I would say that they're largely the same. I mean, obviously, when you're dealing with the kinds of data volumes that we're talking about, you know, there's certain things yeah. that you want to make sure, you know, do it with a sample first, you know, make sure you've got your model validated before you start to scale it. So there's definitely some differences. I mean, we, you know, for example, we've got a customer that's adding new four terabytes of data a day to their uh, Hadoop implementation. And you know, your strategy around data yeah. quality, you need to be pretty smart about it when you're adding that much data. Oh, because the the, the explosion the sheer of magnitude. sources. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. Talk right. about Spark. You can mention that before we went, went yeah. live. Spark's yeah. a big driver for your business. That's we right. had info objects on earlier. They're yeah. like, Spark's changed the game for them. Mm -hmm. Certainly it's the eye candy, it's the shiny new toy yeah. for the customers. The value proposition is significant. Right. Yeah, Take well, us through that and where is that sat from a reliability standpoint, delivery standpoint, where customers are using it. Right, right. Well, we're, we're really excited about it. The uh, That example I talked about with Auto, that was a yeah. Spark-based example. Um, and you know, we're, we think it's going to increase performance three to five times through the you know doing things in memory, as opposed to as which opposed processing? to traditional MapReduce. Uh, map yeah, produce. Over MapReduce. Okay, yeah. over MapReduce. Mm -hmm. That's right. And then uh, on top of that, you've got a whole bunch of new capabilities you can take advantage of, whether yeah. it's the machine learning or uh, streaming for for ingestion, <laughs> which is going to allow you to build a whole series of different applications. I mean, you you go back to that whole analyzing of the turbine data. If you're looking at you know streaming data in real time, that's a whole new level of responsiveness. You know, yeah, when I mean, our, our crowd chat stuff is all real time. We store that in memory on, on an Amazon, but yeah. the minute you put it to disk, kills the whole that's app. That's right, yeah. I mean, there's new apps out there that need this functionality Absolutely. as table stakes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you look at GE, before they started working with us, yeah. uh, they were analyzing their data on a monthly basis you know, the, the next step was to get it to weekly and daily, and you know, it changes the whole game when you can start doing things in real time. So, sh sh uh, share your thoughts on this because I'm, I'm trying to piece the puzzle together on Spark. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been a big fan of Spark from the beginning. Yeah. Saw that emerge out of Berkeley and the whole cloud era involvement, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm, I'm getting mixed messages. I've seen people using Spark in, in their apps and development. Mm -hmm. People are deploying it, 
But yeah, some people are saying, oh, it's not ready for prime time. I mean, where, where is it? What's going on with Spark? Is yeah. it is it shipping? Is it usable? What are people doing with it? And what's the status of it? Is it half baked? Is it right. fully ready? What's going on with Spark? Yeah, so that's a great question. You know, so we're today we're in preview mode uh, with Spark, letting people uh, play with it, but not recommending they go into production. Uh, but w- uh, with our 6.0 version that's coming out in September, it'll be fully supported. And we've held fully off. Fully supported and Talon's product. From a Talon's perspective, okay. right. And Because remember, we're helping people take advantage of this technology. Yeah, yeah. So from our perspective, that'll be the stamp that, yes, Spark is ready for, for prime time. Because you're supporting it. That's right, because fully. we're supporting it for them, for our customers to go make use of it. Just that We felt that before now... Yeah. You know, the APIs yeah. were changing a lot. You know, it's it developing just, fast. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. There's something, There's besides going in memory versus mm-hmm. MapReduce, there's one big, big difference. Yeah. Which is all the different um, processing types, whether it's machine learning or mm-hmm. streaming or, yeah. you know, graph processing, you name it. They're all working on that same engine. Right. Where in the Hadoop world, each one has to go to a different engine, spit yeah. out its result, it results, read in, w- will there be a fundamental change in the kind of um, data integration and, and you know, um, well, solutions that you can provide? Definitely, and, T- and to us. me there's, there's two levels of that. Okay. One is what we're going to do, leveraging machine learning to make our products better. So, you know, think about the number of steps that somebody might have to go through to pull together data from three different sources uh, and that they would have to do all those steps themselves. And now you start to bake in machine learning into our product, suddenly we're auto-recommending, oh, because you did step two, here's the, the, the next three, four, five, six steps. Do you want to just go ahead and do those? When you so say next steps, you mean to pull in In the integration resources. job, in the definition of that integration job. So for, providing- For data sources. For data sources, for, for data integration, data, right? Okay, so okay. it's, how do I, uh, make the process of building an integration job so much uh, more seamless because the app is actually, you know, Talent in this case, is actually recommending, here's how you can go do that. Uh, oh, I see what you're doing. Let me show you the next five things you should probably do. Do you want to use these? Yes, great. And, you know, click a box and you're done. So as we end this segment, I want to get your thoughts on what's under the hood. At, share with the folks out there what's under the hood of Talon, the software, uh-huh. the tech, what right. you guys got going on. Yeah, okay. Well, so we're an uh, open source, source provider of, of data integration uh, applications. So it's uh, data integration, uh, enterprise service bus for real time, master data management. But big data uh, has been the area that we have made a huge bet on in the last few years. And, and really what makes us stand out there is the fact that Everything you do with Talent is being done directly inside of Hadoop. So you're getting all of the performance and scalability benefits of Hadoop. We're generating native code, whether it's Spark or MapReduce or Pig, uh, to, to get that full advantage of what, what Hadoop brings to the table. And, and finally, for the folks that are watching out there, describe your ideal customer that would have the value proposition of Talent so that they might be able to recognize themselves watching this. Right. You know, is yeah, it multiple you know, sources? Is it unification of the data? I mean, describe right. what the problem right. set you were solving yeah. and some yeah, of the challenges. Yeah. Well, the first thing I'd say is um, we're seeing a whole range of different types of customers because we make it really easy to start small and grow over time. So we see people doing small, simple things like their first ETL offload project uh, with Hadoop uh, to people that are making much more strategic bets where they want to be uh, become more data-driven and how do they pull uh, a whole wide variety of information together in real time to be able to act on it to solve new business problems. All right, Ashley Stero, CMO of Talent here on theCUBE. Day two kicking off, wall-to-wall covers the theCUBE. We'll be right back with more after this short break.